in prison, locked up in chains. Sin held me captive to sorrow and pain. Tears of frustration as love passed me by. Until the master heard my heart's cry. here tonight. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing Standing on the Promises. First, third, and fourth verses together. Give me your Wednesday night voices. All right, let's all sing together. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally, my Lord. I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all is. 
Welcome to our midweek service tonight. We're so grateful that you're here and uh, being a part of our midweek service this evening. And it's so good to see you tonight. I trust that you've had a good day. And we're looking forward to our first midweek service in a long time where it's been daylight coming to church. And it's been quite a while. And raise your hand if you'd be grateful when uh, perhaps they'll do away with that uh, time change thing. And uh, I'm not talking about a midweek service. We're going to keep that. I'm talking, so I think some of you got nervous a little bit there. And uh, no, I love our midweek service. We had a great uh, dinner for those going out on outreach tonight. And uh, a great lunch there or supper type style. And, uh, and then went out, had four teams going out, knocking on doors and uh, greeting people. And uh, I know my wife and I and, and uh, Joanna, we got to go out. And uh, to an area, and, uh, one of ours was a follow-up visit from Sunday, and uh, then we started uh, knocking on doors in the neighborhood we were in, and I got to visit, visit uh, I know my wife got to meet one man who had just moved to North Carolina, and uh, here recently, don't have a church home, I got to meet another uh, young lady that had just moved to North Carolina, does not have a church home, I'm telling you, uh, there's so many people out there, they're not saved, they're not in church, and uh, God can use you in a tremendous way. And all of us, if we'll just make ourselves available. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask God for his blessings. And uh, I'll mention more about this at the end of service. But I do want you to really pray for Kenny Moore. Uh, Kenny Moore is at Forsyth Hospital. I got to visit with him today. He's in ICU, and they've called in hospice on him. He's not doing good. And, uh, of course, he's, he's probably going get, to go to heaven soon. And uh, he's got pneumonia really bad. And they've got him on 100% oxygen. They got him all they can give him, and uh, he just is not being able to go to the next step of oxygen and uh, for different various reasons. So um, so this, it doesn't look good for Kenny. But on the other flip side, it does look good for him because uh, his family knows where he's going, and, and uh, his son was there, and Novella was there, his wife. And, of course, some of you don't know them. They're shut-ins, and, and uh, you've been new here since they've been here, and uh, they haven't been really involved in several years and uh, but they're sweet, wonderful people. People, and uh, uh, his son, one of his sons, was there in the room, and he said uh, he remembered when Kenny got saved back in 2002, and we're grateful for that. But you pray for that family tonight, and we love them dearly. And uh, again, we'll mention him tonight in our during our prayer request time. But let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, tonight and ask God for His blessings. If you have a need tonight, or you want the Lord to help you tonight, would you raise your hand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for his help and his blessings this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be in church tonight. Thank you for uh, our church family, Father, and that's what it is. It is a family, uh, Father, where we get to pray for one another. We get to bear one another's burdens. We get to be a blessing and encouragement one to another. And I pray that you are blessed tonight in a very special way. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd help the Moore family right now as their uh, hearts are heavy tonight, Father, and our hearts are heavy with them. Uh, Father, at the hospital, and uh, Father, I pray that you be with them and comfort them, give them grace during this time, specifically Novella and their boy and their sons. And Father, I pray tonight that you would bless our Kids for Truth program and then also the uh, Wiggle Worm program, the team program happened in just a few moments. I pray that you would be exalted through all throughout the campus tonight, what goes on. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts, even in here as we study your word, and we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can remain seated, but Brother Holly's going to come lead us in another song. I want you to sing out with all your hearts unto the Lord tonight. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let Peace. 
several different verses. I enjoy singing, and uh, thank you for singing out as well. We have a couple announcements really quickly that I want to get to you tonight. Our directors are available. I know I saw a really two big thick stacks over there uh, tonight beside the media desk. I know many of you have already got one, and we keep running out of those. So. Uh, Miss Holly has got plenty there for you. If you have not received one, pick one up. Everybody's not in there, but most are. And I would encourage you to get that and pray for one another. Amen? And, uh, and see who one another is. Greet the friends by name. You know, that is a Bible uh, command. Greet the friends by name. And he said, I can't remember people's name. Work on it. And you got the director now. And uh, so let's work hard at that. But then also our services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a wonderful day on Sunday. I was so encouraged. Uh, I don't know how many visitors was here. I, I'm going to say 50 roughly. And uh, uh, 201 at the service. And uh, it's not our record attendance, but it was a great attendance. And uh, I'm excited about what God is doing in our church. And uh, let's pray that God will bless with much harvest and fruit. Uh, from Sunday. You know, we've said many times that the idea was not just to big, get a big number, um, but the idea was to try to reach people. And uh, made, actually, the contact I made tonight, I, I, they weren't home, and so I sent them a text. I had their number, and I said, hey, just want to let you know we're thankful for you being here. And they said, hey, we love the service. We hope to visit again soon. And so the very encouraging response there. And so let's really pray. Raise your hand if you'll help me pray that God will allow, allow us to see much fruit from that. And uh, to see people saved, new families and church. And I don't know about this, but let's just, let's just do this. Let's just leave the seats out by faith. And we put in about 50, 60, I think it was closer to 60 extra seats in here. The metal, what we did was all the chairs that were on the, uh, the wall back there, we, Im we implemented them into the sections here that are already here. And then we set out about, about 60, roughly, of the metal chairs. And uh, so we're just going to leave those out. Is that okay with you? And we're going to trust the Lord that he'll fill them up. And uh, so uh, you say, I like the metal chairs. Well, there you go. You can sit in them. But, uh, uh, but uh, those are, of course, for kind of an overflow type situation. I encourage you to sit on the cushion and uh, get a little closer. All right? And, uh, but anyway, you sit wherever you want to do, of course. But anyway... Um, let's pray that God would bless tremendously. Our services on Sunday, don't forget about breakfast. Uh, let me say that before first. Our breakfast on Sunday, anytime between 9.30 and 10, that's going on in the Activity Center. And then also morning service, of course, 11, evening service at 6 as normal. And then our new members class uh, continuing on. This is our third and last uh, new members class that will take place in this group, in this series. And we have several families. I've already met with two different families already uh, that are planning to join the church here in just a few weeks. And I have several other, uh, maybe four or five other families that are lined up to meet with me uh, to talk about joining the church. So hopefully here in the next few weeks we'll have a lot of families joining the church. And so we're excited, very excited about that. And, uh, and then also our care team. Uh, we'll have our care team rotation, our first quarter rotation meeting on Sunday night. Don't forget about that, okay, for those that are involved in the care team. If you are a member of the church and you would like to be a part of the care team ministry, anybody can do that uh, that has a burden and, and loves people, of course, and wants to be a blessing. Uh, and what we do, we ask that you uh, take this list, maybe it be 10 or 15 families that we divide up, and you'll have a list of families that you will care for, that you will pray for, and uh, that you will, if you hear their name in the prayer time, that you will uh, not only pray for them, but maybe give them a call or text or email or even a visit. If they have a loved one that passes away, that you will perhaps try to make it to the the viewing of the funeral service to support them. Uh, if they're in the hospital, that you would visit them. And uh, and I'm going to be honest, I cannot do everything. And uh, I'm I, I, I'm looking forward to the day when Brother Holly can be here full time and uh, to help out with that. We have several men of our church that are that are that are, uh, that are that help out with visits and everything. And uh, just cannot do it all. And I want you to understand that if I don't reply to a text. Uh, immediately, please understand that I've got other things going on. And if I don't return your call, please understand that I'll get to that. And uh, if I don't visit with you, and when you think I should, please understand I'll get to that. And it's a lot going on. And I'm grateful to be a part of a growing, thriving church. But uh, you, you have to be gracious, okay, and be patient with your pastor 
and uh, sometimes I feel like Stretch Armstrong, you know, uh, you know, and uh, getting out there. Do y'all remember that? Some of you, okay, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Some of you young people are like, what? Who, who's that? You know, and uh, but anyway, uh, I never had one of those, but I always saw the commercials. All right, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, don't forget about that. And then uh, candy donations for Easter spectacular. Our Easter spectacular. Uh, is April 8th, uh, will be starting at 11 o'clock this year and going to 2 o'clock. This is a big, was our biggest events of the year. This is not only for our church young people, but also for our community. And I want to encourage you to get the word out. We'll start putting that on Facebook, social media, Instagram, all the different uh, social media platforms that our church is a part of. And I want to encourage you to share that, get that word out as much as possible. We've got yard signs coming for Easter and Spectacular. And we're doing a mail out. Miss Holly's getting that ready. And it's going to be a big event. And we have inflatables. We have free food, cotton candy, and snow cones, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, ready for that, lined up for that, uh, and we need help. We need volunteers to help uh, oversee that uh, each game and so forth. There's a sign-up sheet over on the table beside the media desk, and I want to encourage you to get by there, sign that up. Several have already, and if you can help us out with that, that would be great. And then also candy, if you want to donate candy, we have about 2,000 Easter eggs that we're going to be stuffing on Sunday night after the evening service on April 2nd. And so we need a lot of candy to stuff those things. And so if you can help donate that, that would be very helpful. One other thing that I want to mention to you, that is our spring revival. I'm so excited about Dr. Scott Cottle uh, being with us. And matter of fact, I text him today and uh, while I was walking uh, about two miles uh, in the hospital there. And uh, if you've ever been to the hospital, you know what I'm talking about. This is a long walk. And I uh, get my exercise in, but I was texting Brother Cottle and telling him I'm looking forward, and he texted me right back and said, Preacher, I am so looking forward to being with you, and you will be encouraged by his spirit, and, uh, and he and his wife are sweet people, and they are true blue. I assure you that. They're the same in here behind this pulpit that they are at their home, and I'm so looking forward to them being with us. Sunday morning, uh, starting at 10 o'clock in here is a combined adult class, and then going all the way through Wednesday. Suppers, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night of that, and looking forward to that as as well, all right? And so keep all that in mind. Let's pray for the meeting also that God would really, really bless in a very special way there, all right? Let's all stand together once again all over the building. Brother Holly's going to come lead us in this next song. Sing it out all with all your heart unto the Lord tonight. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, my faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let's take a moment now, fellowship. Teenagers are dismissed. Scale the utmost height 
and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. All right, let's remain standing. And ushers, you come forward at this time, if you will, please. We're going to receive our offering tonight, and our offering on Wednesday always goes to what? Missions. Let's be faithful to the missions program tonight. As we said, I think last Wednesday, the often, uh, Brother Offenberger, one of our missionaries, I don't think I ever had got the chance to meet him when I came here as pastor uh, six years ago. Um, we support a lot of missionaries that uh, I had came into, and, and perhaps they'd already... I've uh, been supporting them, of course, and just had not got to meet them because they're on the mission field and we're here. And, uh, but, uh, but you pray for his wife, if you will, please, and uh, we'll be uh, talking to the deacons about what to do as far as their support. Uh, we'll probably support her for just a short time and then, and then uh, discontinue that and spread that uh, amongst other missionaries and try to get them up to 200, and we need to do that anymore. So anyway, so we'll probably be doing... Uh, a lot of that here uh, very shortly. All right, God's blessing in the missions program because you're being faithful and you're giving. And let's continue to be that way, all right? Let's pray and ask God for his blessings tonight upon the offering. Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. Father, you said that you love a cheerful giver and help us to be that way. And Father, I pray that you bless each gift and giver tonight, whether it's online or in the plate this evening. And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tonight, and again, it's good to see each one this evening, and I trust that you've had a good day, and I appreciate you being faithful tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 in your Bibles this evening. We're continuing our series of spiritually thriving in Thessalonica. I trust the series has been a blessing, encouragement to you, and it certainly has been a help to me to go back through, study that, read that, and be reminded of that. Paul, excuse me, Peter uh, was saying in one of his epistles, and the Lord used him to pin down how that uh, we are to be stirred up by being put in remembrance. And sometimes revival and being stirred up spiritually is by simply being reminded of things that we already know. Uh, about God's word and our salvation and other things pertaining to that. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tonight, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, and we'll begin reading in verse number 16. Let me give you a little bit of a background where we've been already in our series. So uh, Paul, the apostle Paul, God used him and his missionary team to go into uh, the city of Thessalonica. Uh, and we have record of that in Acts chapter number 17. And God used Paul to start uh, to win souls to Christ and to lead people to the Lord uh, there in the city of Thessalonica. And, uh, and then... After he uh, had discipled them for just about three weeks, uh, there was a riot that started there in the city of Thessalonica. And Paul and his missionary team had to go on into another city because, of course, he would be stoned and so forth. And so uh, Paul had a burden for these believers in Thessalonica. And Paul wanted them to uh, continue to grow. And Paul wanted to see much fruit from their lives. And so Paul sent Timothy, his associate... 
to go and check on them to make sure that they were uh, growing spiritually as they should and, uh, and, and trying to encourage them. And so we find that Timothy went to uh, Thessalonica. When he got to Thessalonica, uh, he found uh, that these believers in, Th- in Thessalonica were really growing spiritually, really doing uh, really well in the Lord, growing in the Lord. And so when, pa- when Timothy got back to Paul, he reported... Uh, something to this effect that Paul, those believers in Thessalonica that you want to the Lord, they are really growing and spiritually thriving. And that's exactly what each one of us should be doing in our Christian life. Amen? Growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, spiritually thriving, spiritually thriving. Really, uh, as some, one preacher said years ago, uh, we're not idle, we're, not, we're, not, we're never in the same place at all times, we're either growing spiritually or we're dying. We're either growing in the Lord or we are dying. And uh, we need to, of course, be growing in the Lord. Let's pray together one more time uh, in asking God to bless his word tonight. And uh, I appreciate you praying for me uh, as I read this and try to preach this this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. And I thank you, Father, for uh, using it, Father, to speak to our hearts. And Father, I need you tonight. I pray that you give me clarity of thought mind. Father, I'm weary tonight. I'm tired uh, physically in many areas. And Father, the uh, work has been uh, very, uh, very tiresome this week. And Father, I pray that you would uh, give me clarity of thought and mind and use me and help me to be a blessing. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do through your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin reading together in chapter 5. In verse number 16, chapter 5 and verse number 16, the Bible says, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Verse number 17, let's continue reading. Pray without ceasing. This is pretty easy to understand, isn't it? Pray without ceasing. In everything, verse 18, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Someone said God will not... Uh, take the same God that brings you to it will bring you through it. Can I get an amen there? Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. You know, Paul wasn't ashamed to say, hey, I need your prayers. Brethren, pray for us. Verse number 26, greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. What does that mean? We'll get to that in a minute, okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to kiss you. When I first surrendered my life to the Lord when I was 19, and I don't even know if I was, I don't even know if I had surrendered a preacher or not when I was 20, but uh, I had, there was a preacher, and I won't call his name, some of you might know him, and, uh, and I, there was a man in our church, and he said, he said, Josh, he said, I want you to come uh, to a revival meeting with me in such and such town, and I said, okay, and so we went. And I was about, you know, when I surrendered my life, Lord, I wanted to be in church almost every single night. I was ready and uh, didn't have a wife and three kids. You know, I was, I was just you know, free and d- did whatever. And, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, went to this meeting. And the first time I met this pastor, never met him before in my life, he came up and kissed me on the cheek. Yeah, I had the same expression you are right now. You're like... Okay, and, but he was a sweet man of God, and he's gone on to heaven now, but he was a sweet man of God. And I, you know, I never got bent out of shape about that because it was, I believe it was, a, it was in the Lord. And he did that to everybody. It just wasn't me. He did that to everybody. But I do believe that's the exception rather than rule. And if you go up and kiss my wife, I'll meet you outside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to keep on the qualifications of 1 Timothy chapter 3 of the qualifications of the pastor, but uh, we'll get to that maybe later on uh, tonight. We don't kiss each other uh, because most of the time the kissing today, if we did it, would not be holy. It's a holy kiss. Okay, verse number 27. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. 
This is the section 26. We're talking, we're kind of using this series kind of like an idea of sitting around the breakfast table and opening up our word, the word of God together and just going down through here and talking about different uh, instructions and applications from the word of God that we can be, that can be helpful into our lives. And I want us to notice several things in this section of uh, verses 16 through 28 and how these the believers in Thessalonica were admonished in simply some general Christian living. Uh, they were admonished in these Christian, uh, general Christian living about how to live the Christian life. And these are just really simple uh, points that we can draw out from this uh, section tonight. Now, notice the first one in this section, and that is in verse number 16. It says, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. You know, Paul, God used Paul, of course, to, to pin this down to these believers in Thessalonica. And God used Paul to write down 13 books. We're sure and confident of perhaps 14 if you include Hebrews. Uh, 14 books of the Bible. And uh, God used him. And, and Paul was a, had a spirit of rejoicing. And a lot of times when he, would, when he would write these epistles, where was he sitting at? He was sitting in a prison cell, and the prison cell was not like it is today. And uh, it, 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 Paul was in like a, a, in a type of a dungeon. You and I would call it a dungeon. You and I would call it a, uh, a, 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 just a, uh, a hole in the wall. I mean, nothing. And, uh, and he was sitting there, and he's exhorting people to rejoice in the Lord. And you're talking about a godly man. You're talking about a man who was rejoicing regardless of the circumstances. And Paul told these believers in Thessalonica, rejoice evermore. And we're to rejoice evermore. We're to rejoice at all times. You know, and, and I realize that every situation of life, sometimes when you're sitting at the stoplight longer than what you think you should, you should have a hard time rejoicing. I was driving the other night, and that dri that's one thing that drives me nuts, is I get to an intersection, nothing coming, for a while, and I mean 30, 45 seconds, 45 seconds, nothing coming through that intersection, red light. And I'm thinking to myself, somebody fix this thing. I mean, you're supposed to be understanding that I'm sitting here now. We've got, you know, we've, we've got so much technology these days. Come on now, let's, let's flip this thing. And, um, and uh, but anyway, we're to rejoice at all times, rejoice evermore. You know, people get encouragement from our rejoicing. We find in the book of Philippians that we are to rejoice in what? Not the circumstances, but in the Lord. And if we'll find our rejoicing in the Lord, I'll find that I'll be able to rejoice at all times. If I rejoice in the circumstances of life, yeah, most of the time I'm not going to be rejoicing. Most of the time I'll be pouting. Woe is me. I'll be throwing myself a pity party, you know. And, uh, but the truth of the matter is, we are to rejoice in the Lord. We're to rejoice evermore or rejoice at all times. Let me ask you a question before we move on. How's your rejoicing? <laughs> How's your rejoicing? How's the rejoicing in your home? Do you laugh at home with your spouse? Do you wife laugh with your uh, wife? Do you laugh with your kids? Do you, do you enjoy life? Rejoice evermore. I realize that life is, is, is in many cases hard and difficult at work and in many cases even at home. And I realize that some of you have unsaved spouses, uh, but may we rejoice in the Lord and keep that joy of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Now, notice the next thing. Verse 17, the next point here, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. How did these believers thrive spiritually in Thessalonica? Because Paul exhorted them to rejoice evermore because they were exhorted to pray without ceasing. Uh, I've used this illustration before. I'll use it again tonight. Uh, have, does any of you ever uh, use your speakerphone on your, telephone, on your phone? Okay, raise your hand if you use your speakerphone. Okay, so most in the auditorium tonight. And I, I use my speakerphone a lot. I'll sit it down and, and uh, be able to drive down the road or at my desk or whatever it may be. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be speaking on the speakerphone. And that's really how we have, need to have that mentality of our lives of that the Lord is on the other line. And I'm living my life with my speakerphone on with the Lord on the other line. 
And we need to keep that, that's what that means is, that praying without ceasing, to keep that line of communication open with the Lord all day long, all night, 24-7, pray without ceasing. Prayer is so very important, so very important. I'm afraid that, that we, we, we do not pray like we should. Uh, I want you to know that I love you and I pray for you as much as I possibly can. And I try to do that and I know I fail many times. But we are to have a, a, a prayer life. Now let me say there's two different things that I've been taught and this very been very helpful to me. I've told this you before, but it, 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 it's very important that you understand that and to be reminded of that. And that is we need to have, number one, a prayer time every single day. What gets scheduled is what's going to get done in your life. If you don't schedule it, it's not going to get done. And that's why it's so important to have a prayer time every single day. When I come into the church, uh, one of my responsibilities, two, two, my two greatest responsibilities biblically as a pastor is to pray and to study the Word of God and to get out the Word of God. And so uh, I, I try to take that serious. And so I, I spend some time in prayer and, and sometimes weeping and walking around uh, different, uh, diff and maybe in my office, maybe in Heritage Hall, just walking around and praying and talking to the Lord, uh, take, talking about our church and, and uh, my life. Because if my life is not right, then I can't pray for other people rightfully to be right, right? And uh, a couple rights there, but, uh, but I have a prayer time. Maybe it's in the night time, maybe it's at lunch time, maybe it's in the morning time. Uh, the psalmist said, morning, evening, at night. Three times a day, morning, evening, and at night, or excuse me, uh, at noon, morning, noon, and night. And uh, not necessarily that order, but morning, noon, and night, three times a day, I'm going to call unto the Lord. And that would be very helpful uh, to, to be reminded to do that really in our lives, to pray in the morning, maybe at lunchtime, to connect back with the Lord, maybe at lunchtime over our meal, and, uh, and then also at nighttime before we go to sleep to keep that open line communication, but to have the prayer time to know in the morning when I wake up, after I get my shower, I brush my teeth, I eat my breakfast, I read my Bible, I'm going to pray. Whether it's five minutes or two hours, I'm going to pray and I'm going to schedule that and I'm not going to let nothing interfere with that. Because if you do, you will never have that prayer time. And it's very important that you have that on a regular basis. Don't just pray whenever you feel like it. Have that regular time with the Lord uh, consistently every day. By the way, don't you think you owe that to the Lord? Don't you think He deserves you to communicate with Him on a daily basis because He saved us? And then not only have a prayer time, but number two, uh, have a prayer life. And that's what this verse number 17 is referring to, no doubt. Pray without ceasing. Have a prayer life. Um, that goes back to the speakerphone. Keep that open line of communication. While you're driving down the road, keep your eyes open and pray. Lord, Lord, please bless so-and-so. I've got this habit. I learned this from another preacher I heard many years ago. Uh, when you see somebody's vehicle... Uh, I know some of you men, some of you ladies, they're like, oh, I didn't even know they had a car. But anyway, uh, some of you guys... Uh, you, can, you know what so-and-so drives, okay? You know, that, you know what the truck looks like. Tootie and Linda, I saw a Dodge uh, Durango. Is that what y'all have, the red one? And uh, I saw that going down the road today on 421. I thought about you guys, and when I was passing it, uh, I saw, I looked over, and it wasn't you, but I thought it was you and, uh, because it looked just like their vehicle. And when I see a vehicle like yours, uh, Miss Wanda Moser drives that Mercury. She's got two different Mercuries that she drives. When I see that car and uh, when I see a forerunner, a gray forerunner, I think of Matt Bennett. And when I see a vehicle, it may not be your vehicle when I see that old green Chevrolet uh, of Michael Cincinnati's. And uh, I may not see your vehicle, but when I see one that looks like yours, it reminds me to pray for them. And when you're going down the road, if you see somebody that has a vehicle like so-and-so, pray for them. Be reminded of that. Uh, pray uh, as you're going about your work. If you're having a hard day, Lord, please help me right now. I need you. Just keep that open line of communication open to the Lord, praying without ceasing. I read a quote actually today, and it was very encouraging. And it said this, The one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. He laughs at our toll mocks at our wisdom, 
but trembles when we pray. You see, Satan, you're, you're, we're not a match for Satan, let's just be honest. He has power that we don't have. And he's not like God, he doesn't have unlimited power like the Lord, but he does have power, he does have ability, and he laughs sometimes at our working and our work ethic, but he understands he's no match for our Savior. And when you talk to your Father, our Father in heaven, the devil trembles because he knows he cannot deal with the power of God. And so the one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying, and he will. He laughs at our toll, mocks at our wisdom, but trembles when we pray. Notice the next thing in verse number 18. So how do, we, how do we spiritually thrive by way of application? How do we thrive in the Christian life? One, rejoice evermore. Two, uh, pray without ceasing. Number three, in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. You say, Pastor, why should I give thanks in everything? Because it's the will of God. You know, that we, there's several things that you, we, we find in the New Testament specifically that are the will of God and speaks of the will of God. And really, a lot of times, maybe a new Christian or maybe a young Christian uh, or, or a younger believer will say, what is God's will? What college should I go to? Who should I date? Et cetera, et cetera. And trying to seek God's will for their life. Well, if you'll do, if we will do and put in action what we do know, then God will has a way to make it very clear what his specific will is for your specific life. But here, it's the will of God that we are to give thanks in everything. Be thankful. So not only we're to be rejoicing all the time, and we are to be praying all the time, but we're to give thanks in everything. You say, Pastor, you don't realize how my week's been. Pastor, you don't know what I've gone through and uh, this month. And Pastor, you don't know what the 2023 year, I thought it was going to be very helpful to me, and it's been very a hardship year for my life. How can I give thanks in everything? I'm glad you asked that. We can give thanks in everything when we realize that God is in control and has a purpose for everything. I'm reminded of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good unto them, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So God works out everything for Hit for our good. And that and when I'm reminded of Romans 8 28, I can be reminded, you know what? I can give thanks, Lord, in this situation because I don't know what's going on. Lord, it seems like my life is upside down. But Lord, I'm just gonna simply give you the thanks because you're worthy of it for who you are. And you've allowed things in my life, and I don't understand them, but I'm gonna trust you for them. Now, look at the next point in verse number 19. And that is, how do we strive spiritually? Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. In other words, allow the Holy Spirit of God to work in and through your life. Don't shut him off. You know, sometimes through the preaching of the Word of God, sometimes through the singing, God ministers through our lives. And hopefully he does that every service. And really, when the Word of God is proclaimed, whether it's been, no matter what ministry type style or whatnot, maybe it's a Sunday school teacher, but when the Word of God goes forth, it should do a work in our heart. It should comfort, it should challenge us to do more. Maybe it would convict us over some sin in our lives. But whatever is happening, don't quench that. If the Holy Spirit of God is is working, don't quench it. Don't shut it off. Don't shut that valve off. How do we do that? By by having that uh uh-uh attitude. Uh Uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. I want the Holy Spirit of God. You say, how do I know if the Lord wants me to go to the altar? You'll know. God will make it very obvious in your heart. I need something. And there will be a drawing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Is everybody with me tonight? There will be a drawing and a moving uh, and, a, and a drawing. And the Lord, uh, you know, the, the devil drives and bangs over your head. God, as a shepherd, he leads us He draws us to himself. And there will be, just like you get saved, nobody had to push you to that, but there was a drawing. There was a convicting power that you could not put your finger on. And that's how the Holy Spirit of God does. He works in our hearts to conform us to his image. And don't quench that. 
Don't shut that off. If God is working in your heart, if God is convicting you of some need in your life, don't shut that off. Don't, don't, uh, don't quench the spirit. Now, notice the next thing, verse number 20. Despise not prophesyings. What does that mean? Basically, if you will, by way of application, don't despise the prophecy of the Word of God. Don't, don't despise the Word of God. Some people do that, unfortunately. Uh, they read the Word of God and, and it becomes a, because it goes against what their, their way of life and their perspective on life and what they want to do. They despise the Word of God. They reject the Word of God. And so God says, don't despise the prophesying. Don't despise the teaching, the principles, and the prophecies of the Word of God. Notice the next thing, letter F, prove all things. In verse number 21, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. Uh, the Bible teaches us to try the spirits, whether they be of God. Uh, prove all things. Don't believe everything. Don't every, every wind of doctrine that comes along. Uh, every, uh, you know, uh, everybody that s- says, I believe in God, may not all line up with the word of God. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe every... Listen, there's two sides to every story. And somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, uh, this, 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 and this, and this. You know what? <laughs> I have to take it with a grain of salt because the next person comes up to me and says, Pastor, so, 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 and it's the same story but a totally different scenario. And I'm like, well, I don't know who to believe. Prove all things. Don't believe everything. Don't, don't believe. Hey, listen, you can't believe everything you see on Facebook. And, 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 and unfortunately, social media in our day and time, everybody just, just throws their heart out there and their mind out there, and they just, there's no reserve there. It's not like you, you, if you sit them down in person, a one-on-one, and look them in the eyeball, they would never say something to you, but they'll write 20 pages on it on social media. And you've got to be careful about that. And, you, and sometimes people just get on the bandwagon. And listen, on, on YouTube... Listen, you got to be careful. Don't latch on to everything that you see on YouTube. Did you know that they can crop videos? <laughs> everything that you watch on YouTube is not real. Everything that you see, there's all... And by the way, people will... On the, the danger, there's so many dangers. Maybe one, one, one service will have a, a message on uh, the dangers of social media of some sort because... It is really, it is, it is ruined marriages. It is, it, it just, it's a bad deal. It's a tool. It's just like a knife. But a lot of people have stuck themselves uh, with this knife and this tool. And uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, be careful with that. Don't, 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 get, don't get on the bandwagon. Everything that you see, prove all things. Uh, understand there's, a, there's two sides to every story. And, and be careful. Have some spiritual discernment. Prove all things. Notice the next thing. Abstain, verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, you know, you, you, you could have a whole message off of this one sentence right here. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it's evil, get away from it. That's what that means, okay? Read between the lines. If it's evil, if it presents itself in a wicked way or a way of sin, get away from it. Uh, have some standards in your life uh, with your television. Uh, you know, the television, um, that's a wicked device. Uh, there's a lot of things that come through that little bitty line that will ruin your home because it gets in your mind. And, uh, we're, you know, there, there's so much and it just feeds us. You know, we forget about Lot who was vexed. His righteous soul was vexed with the seeing and hearing of the wicked every day. And we sit in, that, in, front, of that, in front of that screen and we just, if we're not careful, it just feeds us garbage. And we learn, we begin accepting that. In our society today, we accept much, much more than we would ever thought we would ever been acceptable to. 40, 50, 60 plus years ago because the TV has just slowly fed us that stuff and we've learned to accept it a little by little. Have some standards in your home. You know, if there's cuss words, I'm not going to allow you, if you walk into my home, I wouldn't think anybody would here, but if you were to walk in my home and start cursing uh, in my home, you know what I'm going to say? Right there's the door, sir. And if you don't listen to me, I'll make sure you, you know where that's at. And uh, you say, how you do that? Well, there's ways. And uh, I'll make sure you, you exit 
and be, try to be very kind and compassionate about that, but you're not going to cuss in my home. So why would I allow a movie star to cuss in my home via the television screen? And we need to be careful with that because what you see and what you take in is pretty soon what you think and what you begin doing. And so abstain from all appearance of evil. Isn't God so wise? And so often we ignore this, we despise these things, yet God in His infinite wisdom says, listen, if you want to be a godly Christian that thrives spiritually, you will abstain, uh, distance yourself from everything that presents itself in an evil way. Abstain from all the appearance of evil. Now, notice verse number 23, quickly tonight. Verse number 23, live blameless unto the coming of Jesus. Now, verse number 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And again, sanctification uh, is mentioned there under, in the word sanctify. It means to become set apart uh, from the world and its mentality, its philosophies, its mindset, and set yourself apart unto the Lord. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely. Okay, uh, God doesn't want you living on the fence. God says, I want you to be completely and totally sold out, dedicated unto me. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, a lot of times I don't use Schofield's notes all the time, but I, I saw them here. Uh, I use a Schofield Bible. I just enjoy the Schofield Bible. And I've had it since I was 13. Some of you know that story there. And uh, uh, so I just, I've always had the Schofield Bible. I just like it. There's nothing wrong with uh, Thompson Chain references and so many other things. Uh, of course, as, as long as it's King James Version, we put our stamp approval on that and we understand that. But there's all kinds of different study Bibles. And so, uh, but I want you to look there. If you have a Schofield, uh, you can look there under the notes there. And by the way, if you don't, if, if you have a Schofield Bible, you need to learn how to use the notes because they are not the notes underneath are not inspired, right? They're not the Word of God. They're uh, C.I. Schofield's notes that he, uh, and he was not perfect, and uh, some of the things you may not, always, may not always line up with or agree with, but they can be very helpful, and they have been very helpful to me in my Christian life. And, um, and so look here. If you, if you notice in verse number 23, you might have a study Bible that has something very similar to this. And if you don't have a study Bible... You just have the Word of God. I like that idea too. And, but just listen carefully and you'll, 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 you'll understand where I'm talking about here. Uh, verse number 23, the Schofield Bible has a number one there beside the word whole. So I'll look down in the bottom there, in the bottom half under that line there that designates what is Scripture and what is uh, C.I. Schofield's old notes here. And it says number one. So I know that corresponds with what I'm reading in verse number 23. And it talks about here, man is a trinity, spirit, soul, and body. About midway in Schofield's notes, he says this. Briefly, that distinction, in other words, spirit, soul, body, the distinction is that the spirit is that part of man which knows. It's his mind. The soul is the seat of the affections, desires, and so of the emotions and of the active will, the self. Now I want to skip down. What I really want to get to is this last portion. And uh, it's about one, two, three, four, five. I don't, if you have a scripture Bible, it's like the fourth or fifth line uh, from the bottom that I'm going to be reading at. And listen, if you don't have a study Bible or, or Schofield notes, just listen to these. what uh, Mr. Schofield has to say about verse 23. Because man is spirit, in other words, part of our body is spirit, he is capable of God consciousness and of communication with God. I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was very interesting. And that goes on, it says, because he is soul, because he has a soul, and man has a soul, he has a self-consciousness. I thought that was pretty good. And it says, it goes on to say, because he is body, because he has a body, all of us have one, he has, through his senses, world consciousness. And so I thought that was very interesting. So there's different parts, as you know, of the human body. Uh, spirit, here in verse 23, it is listed as spirit, soul, and body. And the Bible teaches us that with our spirit and our soul and body, that we are to live blameless. 
underscore that word blameless in verse number 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blameless. Let me ask you a question. Could people point fingers at you? Now, you say, well, nobody should point fingers at you, at me. I understand that, but let's just be honest. People do, especially a lost world that looks on Christians and are inventory and looking on you and testing you, if you will, every single day to see if you line up and see if you're true blue. There's people watching you and trying to figure out, are you a true Christian? There's other Christians watching you. Are you a true Christian? And we are to be blameless. Now, I realize that everyone's not perfect. I'm not perfect. No, no one's perfect. But we should strive to live this life that is a, that is a form of Christ-likeness that when others look at our lives, that they look at our spirit, they, they, they see our, uh, our, our words and our spirit and our actions, where we go, what we do, that they would not be able to find fault because we're trying to live so much like the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we're to be blameless and of the, uh, unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, notice the next thing. Verse number 24. Verse number 24. I'm going to hurry. Get to get done. God calls us to live holy. And he enables us to do so. Look in verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. God calls us through his word to say, I want, you to do your, I want you to do my word and implement my word into your life. And God, if God brings you to it, as we already said, God will bring you through it. Look at the next point. Pray for one another. We've already talked about praying, but it was praying without ceasing. Here, we're exhorted in verse number 25 to pray for one another. I'm afraid that too often we use this word, I'm going to pray for you. Praying for you, we put the little, uh, little symbol through a text message uh, with the hands praying together. And I'm afraid that it is just becoming a phrase, a cliche that we use. Don't let that be the case for you. Let's, it, listen, if you tell somebody that you're going to pray for them, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, I've been guilty of that. I've been, oh, especially as a pastor. You, you have to imagine how many times I tell people I'm going to pray for you. And I legitimately, if I tell you I'm going to pray for you, I earnestly and sincerely mean that. And do my very, very best to follow up with that, to pray for you. Uh, and, uh, and to remember you in prayer and pray for your needs. And do my very best with that. But may, we God, may God help us to pray for one another. One of the secrets... Uh, that I think it was D.L. Moody or Charles Spurgeon, one of the preachers of the early 1800s that God used in such a powerful way. They asked, what is the secret of your ministry? And he replied simply this, my people pray for me. My people pray for me. Oh, and I covet your prayers. And, uh, and I pray for you. Notice the next thing, verse 26. Here we are, our, fame, our, our verse that we talked about just a moment ago. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. Now, I studied this out because I wanted to know what, is, what does this mean? This was the traditional way, uh, as I was reading from one commentary, this was the traditional way to greet others during that time. And Paul was basically uh, wanting to uh, give everyone a, a quote-unquote holy kiss uh, to let them know his love and care for them. Again, most Christians in our culture today uh, should simply greet others with a handshake uh, rather than a kiss. And you understand the reasons for that, okay? Um, that could, you could get in a lot of trouble with that, okay? And, of course, some cultures still do that, uh, give a kiss on the cheek. But in our American culture, uh, very seldom, if any, would there be a kiss that would be a spiritual, holy kiss. Uh, you understand that would turn into a lust and, uh, and, and bitterness and so many different uh, fornications and adultery and so forth. And so the handshake works just fine. Hey, man. So... Uh, we need to rightly divide Scripture, okay? We need to interpret it correctly, but also rightly divide that. Now, notice this, the next thing, verse 27. I'm almost done, and uh, obviously you can tell that. Letter L, the epistle needed to be read by everyone. In verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. In other words, Paul wanted to make sure that everyone uh, could hear uh, the teachings of the inspired word here, and, uh, and that needs to be under the sound of everyone. By the way, can I see this by quick application here? 
You need, and I've said this many times before, but you need more than just Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. You need more than what just Pastor Bowles or Dr. Scott Cotta when he comes uh, in, in uh, two weeks. You need more than what just the preacher gives you. You need to read that for yourself. That's why it's so important to bring your Bible, read along, uh, understand that for yourself. And lastly, in verse 28, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The grace, God's grace, of course, is needed for every day of our lives. I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for God's grace and His strength. I sure do need Him. I need the Lord's grace. None of us, may God help us to have, go through the day to say, Lord, I, I think I've got this one today. No, may we wake up every morning. Lord, I need you. I need your wisdom. I need your discernment. I need your grace, your strength, and your help in my life. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together tonight. Thank you so much for listening so carefully this evening. I believe that you're sincerely hungry to do and implement the Word of God. So simple tonight. So simple. So applicable to our every Christian life this evening. Let's all stand together with our heads bowed and eyes are closed. The musicians are coming. And just in a moment, as they begin playing with heads bowed and eyes are closed, the altar's open. And I wonder tonight if you have a need. Would you find yourself on the altar? Would you find some help with whatever the need is in your life tonight? Uh, I don't know if there's someone here that does not know Jesus as their personal Savior. Or if you're here tonight, you're saved and you just simply need the Lord's help. But if you come tonight, I know the Lord will meet you. I know the Lord will help you. Would you come tonight? They're going to play just through a verse and a chorus tonight. We never want to close the service without an invitation to do business with the Lord. But if you have a need, would you come tonight? Christ is all I need. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. Father, we ask that you'd help us as we try to implement these truths into our lives, that you'd give us what we need, that you would give us grace. Father, we can do nothing apart from you. Lord, help us, I pray, in every way, Father, with these truths tonight. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to go over these prayer requests tonight, and then we'll take outspoken prayer requests as well. I want to encourage you to pray for all of our shut-ins, of course, and uh, the list is on the back of the bulletin there, and so I want to encourage you to remember those. And then, of course, all of our missionaries. I want you to pray for all of our missionaries. As we've already mentioned uh, the Offenbergers. Uh, let's remember to pray for them and that family uh, with the passing of Brother Offenberger, one of our missionaries. Then also, let's pray for Chloe. Chloe Rochester, she's a sweet little girl, and she's got cancer. And uh, let's remember to pray for her. She recovers and takes treatment. And I know that's a strain on that family right now. And so let's really pray for them that the Lord would help them during this time. And then also let's also pray for uh, Miss Wanda Michaels, Randy Smith. Randy really needs your prayer. And uh, he's really going through a lot. So let's really pray for him right now. Ryan Marlowe, continue to pray for him as he continues to recover. Sterling Kettner's wife, Ruby Kane, Linda Young's daughter, Lori. Uh, Brady Davis. Brady is in the Bryan Center. And appreciate Brother Michael Cincinnati going to sing him Monday. And uh, he's having a little bit of memory trouble. 
and uh, some things, uh, lack of memory, so forth, and uh, thinking, imagining things some, a little bit, not too bad, but just some uh, noticeable. And so do pray for Brady. Uh, Michael had a good visit with him, he said, and, but let's remember to pray for him, if you will, please, during this time. And then also Chad Allen. Ms. Carolyn, you want to give us an update on Chad? Okay, so let's continue to pray for Chad as he recovers. He's been through a lot recently, so let's really pray for him. And then also let's pray for Patricia and Lawrence Miller. We love them dearly. And uh, Lawrence is just really having a hard time, of course, just, just, just physically in a lot of areas. So let's pray for them, if you will. And then also Miss Bunny Manning, let's pray for her grandson Alex. And then also uh, Melanie Williamson as she continues to take her cancer treatment. Olivia Morton's grandmother, continue to pray for her. Charles Botit, it was so good to see him on Sunday, really all day. He rode the wheelchair in Sunday morning and walked Sunday night. And so we're so grateful for that. Continue to pray for him with cancer. Barbara Falls, uh, Gary Bartley, Dot Adams. Uh, Miss Dot sent me a text and said that she was, she's really, she would love to come to church Sunday probably watching right now and so let's pray for her as she recovers and uh, let's pray that the Lord allow her to be able to be at church her and for the body if it would be his will and give her the strength to do that Kinston Adams their grandson pray for him Craig uh, excuse me Hannah Craig with her grandson Cooper really pray for him if you will Larry Smith some really uh, specific need there uh, Josh Starnes we missed Jeff and not Jeff Jeff you're here uh, Larry and Brenda uh, we miss them tonight, and of course, Josh, he had an emergency procedure uh, on, uh, was it Monday night? And uh, Monday night, and I got to see him, he was at Baptist Hospital uh, there yesterday, got to see him briefly, and he's home now, and doing fine, Miss Brenda texted me, he's at home, so continue to pray for Josh, he had some type of abscess here in his side, and they've got that taken care of, remember him in prayer, and then also, uh, let's pray for uh, Kenny Moore, as I mentioned prior in our introduction of introdu introducing our service uh, to you this more this evening that uh, Kenny uh, is an ICU there at Forsyth Hospital got to see him today speak to Miss Novella and they've they, right as I walked in I think the hospice just has left or the doctor told them about hospice right when I, before I got there so really pray for them if you will during this time I know you will be and then Ray Conrad this is Robert Church's uh, nephew he was here on Sunday morning, and I got to meet him, really uh, great guy, and uh, had the heart attack, and uh, so he had the open heart surgery uh, this past, this week, and he's at Baptist Hospital, and he's recovering, and so I really want you to pray for him as he recovers, and I would love to see him come to church here, so let's really pray for Ray, Robert's nephew. Does anybody else have any prayer requests? We'll start on this side over here. Okay, Mike? Okay. Okay, let's pray for Mike's friend. Anybody else? Okay, Miss Donna. Okay, Elisa, pray for her. Anybody else? Okay, Joe. Yeah, I feel so sorry for them. I hurt for them tonight. No, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic, yeah. Yeah, let's, but on a, yeah, let's, okay, yes, on a serious note, Let's pray for Brad and Crystal as they travel and as they're in Mexico on a honeymoon. If you guys are watching, I know they were watching on Sunday, and if you guys are watching, happy anniversary. We're excited for you. I wish I was there. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, God bless you for your anniversary. And I'm joking. All jokes aside, let's pray for Brad and Crystal. We miss them. Let's pray for their safety. Anybody else over here? Okay, Matt. Okay.
All right, so let's pray for Ernest with cancer. Appreciate Matt being a, a, a witness and a help to him. Anybody else? Okay. Amen. Amen. Praying. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Okay, going slow. Casey, good to see you moving up to the cushions here. Usually you're on the wall and uh, you guys are sitting on the cushions. All right, God bless you. you. You'll be on the front before it's over, okay? Okay, let's, I tell you what, let's do, is this okay if I go ahead and do this? Okay, y'all stand up. Y'all, y'all get, can y'all stand? Okay, so I want to do this. Maybe we should have waited Sunday morning, but let's go ahead and do this on Wednesday night. We appreciate Casey and Mariah. And uh, they are proud to announce that they have another baby on the way. So let's give them a hand tonight. All right. We're so excited. Y'all can be seated. I've embarrassed you enough tonight. I love you guys. And we're so excited. We have so many uh, moms expecting. And I don't know. I've lost count now. I think five or six, I think. And one of them having twins. And just, just uh, I'm excited. And I know Miss Linda, she oversees the nursery. I know she's tickled to death as well. Anybody else uh, over here? All right. Okay. If you have an unspoken prayer request, would you raise your hand tonight? And uh, there's so many needs in our country and uh, so many things we need to pray about uh, in our country and just churches all across the world. Let's pray for our services on Sunday. I really would like to see people being saved and uh, people be encouraged and helped in the Lord. And so let's really pray that God would bless us. Pray for God's power, His presence in our services, and blessings just all the way around. Let's pray together tonight in our seats here together. Father, we love you. We thank you so much again for allowing us to be here tonight. Father, we thank you for our church family. And like Frank said, we have a wonderful God and we're grateful. We love you tonight. And Father, I pray that you would help each one of these prayer requests. Father, the ones we've mentioned. And Father, the ones that were outspoken. We pray for each one of these that your will be done in them. Comfort, strengthen, help. I think about Kenny tonight. I pray that you would help him. You know the process there. And Father, I pray that you'd help him and Novella and that family. Father, so many others that are struggling, that have been in and out of the hospital, rehabilitation places. And I pray that you'd strengthen. I pray that you'd help our church family emotionally, mentally, and physically, and spiritually. So many other things. Thank you so much for the, the good report. Father, we're so excited for the Green family uh, with a new one coming. And so many others, so many ladies that are uh, carrying little babies. And I pray that you would uh, bless and help those expectant mothers and fathers. They, as you bring new ones into the world. I think about my sister who's I really do any second. I pray that you'd help her and her family. Father, so many, and I pray that you bless them and help them with their new families and new additions. And Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. I ask that you please continue to bless, have your power upon it, and your blessings, your grace, and your strength in, in every way, every ministry, every service. May you be exalted and magnified through everything that's said and done. And we'll thank you tonight for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together tonight. If you're glad you came, would you say Amen. I love you tonight. You're so, such a wonderful, sweet people, and I thank the Lord for you. Turn around, shake a hand or two tonight, greet one another. God bless you as our prayer. You're dismissed.